Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So I decided to make a very drastic change, which is one of the primary reasons why I haven't posted in seven days. Um, as you all know, I've been running a Windows environment for all of my services and necessities. However, there was a fairly decent overhead. I didn't want to deal with the licensing and my My, tri my trials my trials were running out, so it was time to make a change. So I took a look into Proxmox, and it turns out that Proxmox, as a Type 1 hypervisor, can do anything that Windows Server has done, and then some, and uh, I decided to give it a try. So I'm just uh, gonna walk you through uh, the installation on one of my latest servers. And uh, we're gonna do some basic configuration, join it into a cluster, and configure the network storage. So please stand by, uh, please join me, and uh, we're gonna continue. Now, something just to notice, I've already went ahead and prepared my uh, SSDs into SATA mode. I have taken them out of B140i Smart Array, and my RAID controller is in pass-through mode or HBA mode or whatever you're uh, comfortable with. All right. And now for the installation, uh, we're gonna select target hard disk and from the file system dropdown, we're going to select ZFS RAID 1. Now it gives us all this availability, but because we wanna keep it simple, we're gonna deselect everything and in hard disk zero and hard disk one, we're just going to select the two drives that are going to be acting as boot. Under advanced options, make sure that the hard drive size is properly recognized and click on okay. And once you're satisfied with the target and properly rec once the target is properly recognized and you're satisfied, you can go ahead and click on the next button now this is the window, sorry, this is the menu that you're going to be typing in your country information and your time zone information, which personally I don't think is necessary because the administrative GUI is not going to be accessing the internet. Therefore, it is just another thing that needs to get configured. Once you're done with that, click on next, set your uh, administrative access password and make sure that it is secure. We're talking uppercase, lowercase, a number and a symbol, and at least eight characters long. So once you've done that, go ahead and tab into the next um, box. You can select no at thankyou.com. Now this is the part where a lot of people get confused about. So the host name, the host name, sorry, is how your server is identifying itself on the network. In in this scenario, uh, I forgot to add the domain information. So in that case, it's gonna be um, tgsc08 dot domain dot local or whatever your domain is. The IP address for the server is 2.28 and the gateway and the DNS server are the same address. Once you're satisfied with that, uh, click on OK. And as soon as I correct my mistake over here, we are going to advance onto the next window. Once you take a look at the summary and you're satisfied with how your configurations are, click on install and just wait until it completes. Okay, now that we have Proxmox installed and booted up, and once we log into the um, web GUI environment, there are a couple of things that we need to do. Number one, we're gonna click on data center, go into storage. There is gonna be two entries over here. We're gonna delete the first, and because the second cannot really be deleted, we're just going to remove the sharing and disable the, the share by itself. That way, when we join it to the cluster, we're going to make sure that all of our storage is networked. Number two, we're going to go ahead and install Ceph, which is not going to take very long. Uh, make sure that you install the latest available version and click on Start Quincy Installation. Once that's done, we're going to proceed to number three. Okay, 
now that the installation is all done we're going to click on next we're going to uh, select the public network IP and the cluster network IP so that uh, so that once we uh, we're done with the configuration we can uh, continue flawlessly and now that's done we're gonna go to the next step what I personally like to do for my machines is I like to aggregate the networking adapters uh, what that means is having both Ethernet ports or both SFP ports work together to give me more bandwidth so the way to do this is you're gonna go into the entry that's the actual server under system and select network and for you it's going to be a little bit different but this is my um, this is the, the menu that I have so how you create a LACP uh, aggregation is you're going to create click on create but make sure that you click on the little arrow so that you have this drop down menu and after that you're going to click on Linux bond make sure that you know which uh, two interfaces you're going to be bonding in my case is going to be ENO49 and ENO50 so we can leave we can leave this empty and we can leave this empty as well and in the slaves we're going to type in ENO49 space ENO50 and in the mode we're going to click select sorry LACP in the hash policy it's layer 2 and layer 3 which are the best recommended and in the comment you can just put a label for it for me it's going to be whoops, it is 20 gigabit per second LACP aggregation and then we're going to click on create and that's it your bond is created but it's not yet active the reason why I'm not going to activate it right away is because I currently am still waiting for my 10 gig switch to show up and then I have to configure it and the enablement of the LACP bond is going to be done last but obviously I will make a video of that don't worry I will share it so now that this is done uh, the next thing we want to do is go under data center again and we're going to go into the cluster information um, don't worry about the uh, fault it's just saying that I don't have any OSDs created so we are going to select join cluster because we are going to add this computer into our primary pool now I'm going to go to the master of my primary and I'm going to go under cluster and I'll click join information I'll copy that information and then I'll paste it into uh, into my new computer sorry into my new server with peers address making sure that everything is as it should be and then I'm going to enter the password for the peer whoopsie daisy and I'm going to click on join after this is done actually you're not going to see it complete over here because once you join a server into a cluster its own interface is no longer available so you're just gonna have to give it a second or two and then close the dialog and then exit out of the GUI that's for the last server and then go into your main cluster sorry it, yes into your main cluster GUI which is accessible through your master and you're going to see that your computer is going to be added into the cluster now that that's done uh, what I would like to, what I'd like to do next is I like to go into uh, Ceph I believe it was this uh, option right here no Ceph OSD so as you can see I have all of the hard drives available across all of my servers but I have not yet added the hard drives that are connected to the latest server that I just joined so there are several ways to do this if your drives are blank and ready to join 
if you click on create OSD, it's going to detect them automatically like it has so far. And as you can see, I have several ones to join. However, something that you need to know, one, two, three. Oh yes, okay. So I have a, a few drives. I have 2.4 terabytes and I have, oh, what is this? Okay, yeah, I need to wipe them before I get them to uh, join because I have several 2.4 terabytes and several 300 gigabytes. Uh, the difference between 300 gigabyte ones and the 2.4 terabyte ones is that the uh, 2.4 terabytes are 10,000 RPM and the 300 gigabytes are 15,000 RPM. So let me just go ahead and do that real quick and we'll get back to it. So for those who are not aware of how to wipe a disk, you need to go into the server that you're gonna be targeting and then under the middle menu, you're going to go down to disks. In this scenario, I have several disks that need to be wiped. So I'm going to start off. I'm going to start selecting disks and wiping them. First one, done. And just make sure that when you select disks, do not accidentally uh, select your boot drive. Make sure that you are carefully inspecting the disks. So in this scenario, as you can see, this one is already wiped. This one is already wiped. And then moving on down the list. Okay, now that all of our drives are prepared, now we are going to go back into uh, OSD under the Ceph tab, and we're going to start creating OSDs, and we're going to add all of our drives that we just wiped and prepared. Okay, perfect. Now that we have ver uh, finished adding all of our disks, we can just scroll down to our target server. In my case, it's TGSC08. And we're going to make sure that all of our drives have been added and that we're not missing anything. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that's all the hard drives that are connected to this server in particular that have now been added to the Ceph pool. If we go up to summary, it should give us the summary of that computer itself, but that's not what I'm looking for. I am looking for the summary of the data center that is running. And we have an extra 100 gigabytes added to the total pool with, I want to say, 30 terabytes of space that have been added in total to my total storage pool. Now, that being said, your numbers will differ, but this is just to show you that there is a way to uh, see the difference that you are making. Now that all that's, now that this is all complete, uh, your pool and your server farm is ready for use. You can go ahead and create a virtual machine. You can go ahead and play with networking. You can go ahead and have a complete home lab. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.